Let's uh, turn on prestige. Look at the new outfit. Saboteurs. I actually don't like that that much. I may change outfit during the run. Let's go. You bear the brunt of the Hey, Della Truxon. How's it going? Soldier's uniform. So you turned yours in and left the Welcome to the stream. Glad you could catch it. But even out of uniform, your name still carries the weight of your medals. Captain Rook, the veteran, the hero, the saboteur, the spy. The tinker, the tailor, the soldier. These days, the bugs there... Are you doing fast mode this run? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I will be. Pop that fast mode on. Because I've covered, like, both sides of the story most of the way through in the YouTube series. Um, and also don't necessarily uh, need to reread all of these events. Perhaps any of you found Rook generally very negotiation focused? I've been playing Rook generally very negotiation focused and that's just because a lot of the early encounters you get with Rook are negotiation. Um, so you have the ability to upgrade your negotiation deck very, very quickly and the defense for negotiation is really, really bad, but the more negotiation you take early, the more quickly you can upgrade your defensive card, the better you can get at it. So I, I kind of end up pigeonholed into negotiation uh, with Rook rather than deciding to go for it a lot of the time. All right. I'm just going to convince them to let us through. Pretty much every turn that I have the ability to just double defend myself, I'll do it. Also, Raps, did you see your role in the Wholesome Dust Cinematic Universe? I made it and made you Doctor Strange. Orbital was disgusted at his role, so I need your approval on that so I don't end up being hated. Uh, I, I did not see that. Where's, where's that being held? I, I can see the, the Doctor Strange thing. It's, it's the very light amount of facial hair, I imagine, is the, uh, the binding facts there. All right, trickery. I'm looking for defense. I guess I'll use Flustered to defend myself here. Defends me for two damage. That's not bad. All right, I'll use the yeah, use the gamble there just so that I can get the rationale back, and I will call it until I defend. Beautiful, I defended. Actually, I do want call it to get upgraded as soon as possible. Yeah, so I'll play this anyway. Pin the messages in the general chat of the wholesome verse. Beautiful, I'll go say it in a bit. Oh. This argument creation. Ridiculous. Okay, if Strawman. I'm gonna take a ridiculous amount of damage if I allow Strawman to die. Because it dies, and then I get three vulnerability. So all of my resolve loss is increased by one. So it dies, I take five damage, five damage, five damage. I think is how that works. Raps would be Doctor Strange, Rio would be Star Lord, Jonas would be Vision, Alexa would be Mysterio. <laughs> I like that Alexa is just a villain, everyone else, so far at least. Um, Potato would be Nick Fury, but not his arms. <laughs> and Penta would be Fury's arms. Lolash would be Hawkeye, Moddy would be Scarlet Witch, Woodsy would be Thor, Vladimir Ledoux would be uh, Quicksilver, Ethereon would be Spider Man. I think Sneaky Teak would be Spider Man actually. Also, who's Wonderbot in that? You're missing a couple people. I don't want to end the negotiation early, but I also don't want to take approximately infinity damage. Maybe I'm okay with taking the damage for the upgrades. You got a... Yeah, you do have a composure card for me. Okay, that's... That's better. None of these are attacking me. It's just the intents you have. Okay, fine. I'll take that out. I'll compose myself twice. So I'll compose you twice. There we go. And never mind. Everything's fine. What about Loki? Huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and think if I can think of uh, of any of the ones that would be maybe a little uh, a little more apt than that. Because I could see Alexa being Doctor Strange. Okay. 
basically until the game says I'm not getting any more experience for this uh, this match, I am going to continually. Hang on, what have you got? You got another coin, don't you? Yeah. Uh, until the game says I'm getting no more experience for the match, I am going to continually just defend. You feel like Wonderwatch should be something robotic or at least robotically inclined? That 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 gives you your your, your Iron Man, your Vision, your Jarvis, I guess, as well. Double defend those. I'll call it to see if I defend it. Right, because this coin can... Yeah, one composure to a random argument, so it could actually compose the other argument. Eh, I need to start losing the vulnerability anyway, so... Fine. We chose Doctor Strange because of... <laughs> I kind of get the juice for that reason. Alexa said it was shockingly accurate. I, I'm i gonna blush to high heavens when I eventually read that chat afterwards. What's, uh, what, what's made Jonas Vision? I'm interested in that. Was there a reasoning given in chat specifically? So it looks like I have to double defend here. Do I double defend the straw man or defend myself? Let the straw man die, get the vulnerability. Maybe Raps just reminds people of Benedict Cumberland for some reason. Yeah. It's uh, I've, I've heard it before. <laughs> I, a lot of the kind of like, male actors in the MCU I've heard comparisons I think Jonas asked to be Vision <laughs> is it wrong to think Rook is kind of hot no it is uh it is 100% correct too all right the enemy just got impatience so I'm pretty sure that next round I'm no longer attacking so I'm no longer getting experience rather So I think it's probably time for me to murder. Ooh, maybe not. If I can fluster the enemy, maybe not though. Maybe, maybe not. All right, let's start gambling. To defend. Fine off end, I guess. I feel like I'm gonna lose a lot of resolve here. This is the second time I've seen a roguelike slash light that tried to represent dialogue as a variant on combat while the other is being Renowned Explorers. That was one of the, I think, did I reference Renowned Explorers in my first episode for this on YouTube? I, I remember that as I was drafting what I wanted to say, like, you know, the kind of like patter to include me talking about the game, my description of the game and the talking points that I was paid to put in there. Um, I, I remember saying that I wanted to include a reference to Renowned Explorers because it reminded me a lot of Renowned Explorers, like obviously being able to treat enemies hostile or, or diplomatic, uh, obviously like the non, like a uh, uh, combat, the or rather dialogue uh phrased as combat as well we talked about it a lot during the twitch stream dang not then necessarily no. all right yeah impatience is up so let's just go for lethal now gamble Okay. Interesting. We have Brute hits all targets, lose all dominance. Upgrades to give you one dominance at the end or three to four. I mean, if you have a deck with no dominance, that's still a pretty good card. One energy to hit all enemies. Always. Like most other things say something along the lines of, uh, you know, pay to dominance in order to or if you are, or, or gamble, if you hit heads, then, 
right? This is unrestricted AoE. Hey, Raps, when are we going to see your Rook closet close play? Uh, I, as, as soon as I can grow a moustache worthy of the name. Hmm. Yeah, I'm taking it. Okay, uh, Blacklist is interesting, but I think Shovel is way more important. Gain two bonus damage per empty cell, gain two defense per charge. So if you do happen to go for like a heavy charge build, so you're filling out all of your charge slots, so you're not gaining defense at the end of your turn passively from empty charge slots, this helps you... Uh, this helps you kind of fix that a little bit on one turn. Again, another thing that I learned in Elisanda's stream. A combat graph slot. So Rook does have a harder time getting graphs than other characters and starts with more graph slots. So this is less valuable than I otherwise might have thought. But at the same rate, draft two battle cards, draft two negotiation cards. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the slap dash surgery. Talking about renowned explorers, any chance you'll play that game in the future? Really like your videos on the game? Probably not, but if I end up doing something like, oh, revisit the the series over the course of the channel's history, or like, these are some of the favorite roguelikes that I played, or if I manage to, you know, I, I don't imagine I'll manage to get it uh, put into the pyramid or anything like that, but it's not impossible. All right. Who should we work for? Should we work for Felimo or Calandra? Is there any particular reason to work one over the other when I'm drafting a deck that looks like it's going to be dominance-based? Felimo be a fascist this run? Is there... They're, they're definitely hierarchical, but do they have, like, the mainstays of kind of fash behavior? I may have just skimmed over their text a little bit too much. Alright, we'll start with Dolma, though. They become fascist when they kill anyone who opposes you? That's me doing that. Alright, awful rook, let's go. Oppression, forced labor, financial shakedowns. Those... Those still seem to be missing kind of like... Your, your big markers of... Of, uh, of fascism. That just seems like capitalism, baby. Alright. Hands me. Thank you. Not enough parades. Isn't killing anyone who opposes you, fascist? The broadening the definition of fascist helps uh, only one group of people. <laughs> uh, Alright. Uh, my defense is turning good garbage. That's fine. Pleasant trees, so I'm not going to be able to remove all business here. Cold stuff. What takes you aiming towards this run? So I don't really necessarily know yet. Hey, Rito, how's it going, bud? Games with the spaces. Hell yeah. We're, uh, we're just starting out the Rook run. Might be a little bit of gamesters. Guess there's no obvious racism in any plan in this game. Not necessarily that I've found yet. Um, I mean, just because it isn't strictly a fascist path doesn't mean you have to, you can't go full desperate and murder everyone. Oh, I am fully on board with that. Let's go for it. I, uh, I, I have been murdering many, many, many people in this game already, so... You know, it fits. All the Igri's attacks deal one more damage. Get rid of that. Let's call it to actually see if we get any defense from this. We do. Okay, so I can double ration all the back line. I don't have to call it this turn because I've got more cards in my draw pile, so I'm not going to shuffle the draw pile yet. Okay. You're holding a gamble for us. I'm not going to be able to defend myself well here, but at the very least, we get to finally see... 
Brute do ridiculous work. Hell yeah, Brute. Okay. I'm going to want to start leveling up these Grumbles so I can see if I get the Dominant Grumble, which gives you one Dominance as well. Marcus of Rambles, thank you very much for the uh, T1 subscription. Continue to enjoy your in chat. Welcome to the Republic, bud. For the second one. Is there any way to edit a message from a pinned tab, or do I have to scroll all the way up to add one box and show? Uh, you have the ability, if you, if you click the pin and hover over the message, you have the ability to jump to the message in chat, and then you can edit it from there. Saves you the scroll. Sorry, what's texting you? I mean, towards uh, nothing is the the reason I was so easily distracted on that is I don't really have an aim for this deck yet. I've got to make sure that I get these rationales upgraded as soon as possible. They're just super important. <clears throat> Enemy got impatience that round, so next round I am getting no more experience, I believe. It's a rationale I'd like to level up though. Give me the rationale. Oh, we may not even uh, take him out this round. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> All right, it's a decent chunk of damage we take there. That's fine. We heal back up as we go on our first mission and get the Parasite Infection because the Parasite Infection actually heals your resolve as well. So this isn't as bad as it looked. And we did get fatigued immediately the round after that. Perfect. I mean, it doesn't matter which I use here, right? Experience. Do a parasite build i would love to do a parasite build but the parasite builds like whether or not you can do that depends heavily on which npcs show up early in your game there is an npc who if they love you every time you draw a parasite card you gain like two health or two resolve depending on the deck that is super useful it makes it usable as as a card the Parasite is garbage. Broadly, I do agree with Zulipap, though. Rig is my take? Really? Rig for heads when we have a deck that, like, all it tinges towards at the moment is dominance? What is a Parasite build? Do you talk to the bog people? So, uh, the Parasite build would effectively be just having the Parasite. The Parasite is an event that happens very early on in Rook's run that uh, has a lot of levels of just being a detrimental card in your deck, but then eventually it starts to become actually like a bonus to you. Uh, like play the top three cards of your deck with random targets, that something like that, triple mayhem kind of situation. Or uh, unstable concoction, no, unstable concoction? What's it called? The one that plays the top three cards of your deck, the, the potion. Draw a card is the most powerful text in any card game IMO. That's where I'm leaning as well. The first round I've ever won with Rook, I immediately removed both Parasites and won with negative 20 minutes. Oh. Battery has run out. One sec. One second. I'll be right back. I need to replace the batteries in the mouse. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, it's visionary rationale for me. Definitely not. Oh. I just like the concept of opening up card picks to allow for specific heads or tails. I... I don't dislike that. It's just I don't want to put myself into rigging heads yet. When this card is drawn, gain one action and expend... I, you, you just take this, right? Every time you get it, because when it's upgraded, it gives you an action and a card. Hmm. Yeah, 
You just take it. Alright, Flomo. Let's go. Healing Vapors. No, I don't want Healing Vapors. Both of these are early negotiations, though. Wants me to scare off a Rise Recruiter who's been sniffing around one of the work sites. Or a potentially violent situation at the cafe. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to go for this. Because not only do I want the upgrade, I also want, you know, 10 more shields. Message control. There we go. Got five resolve back, so we managed to heal most of the resolve that we lost in those early battles. And we got Twig and Stem. Those are our two Parasite cards. In case you're unfamiliar, you get one Parasite card in each deck. Twig, when this card take, uh, is drawn, rather, take one damage. Unplayable, Parasite. Parasite means if I remove it, I lower my max health by 10. And hatch. When this card reaches full experience, it is destroyed and triggers a special event. It doesn't show upgrades, but it effectively upgrades in the middle of combat. Uh, there are, I believe, three bad things that you get. So you have to upgrade them past being bad three different times. And then the fourth thing that you get starts to be good and bad. And then if you hatch those, they just transform between a couple different options that are good and bad. I do think maybe they need a little, little bit more help, but to be fair, I am relatively new, so maybe they don't necessarily need that much help. <clears throat> Are the Parasite hatches random? Uh, the upgrades, the initial path of upgrades, like, uh, no, but when it gets to the top level and it has, like, a couple to pull from that are positive and negative effects, yes, it's random at that point. So Parasite doesn't have an end evolve. No, it has an end stage, all of which are, you know, both positive and negative. I I really was hoping that there was going to be something, you know, to cap it all off, but not necessarily at the moment it appears. Right, let's ask you about the pamphleteer. I could try and beat information out of people. I do need to get some aggression early because otherwise I'm just going to die at the end of day one to the aggression. But at the same rate, like, I don't necessarily want to make an enemy right now. Because I'm the aggressor in this situation. If it's self-defense, I can do it. Oh, wait, no, hang on. We're playing fast trash, right? Like, I'm I'm just going to refer to this as Rook being, like, you know, uh, awful or something like that. I'm not necessarily going to carry with the, the aesthetic quality of... Uh, of continually calling Rook a Fash character is uncomfy. But Rook is an absolute bastard, right? Let's go. I'm gonna beat the information out of you. Mm. Your name is Rook? Your name is Rook, but you really, you're the rich man's pawn? Hell yeah. When destroy the attack against six mending, yeah, it's fine. We've also got worn out, reduced uh, by one when attacked. If it reaches one at the end, sorry, it increases by one at the end of the turn. If it reaches zero, it applies once done. Got it. I'm gonna have to use shovel this turn for defense. I still do ideally want to slow this fight down a little. Yeah, so I might not deal that much damage. That, uh, but kick is really hard to upgrade. Like to the point that anytime I have a free kick, I should take it. I really hate kicks due to mending thing. Uh, mending is on my side. I don't think I'll be able to... Yeah, I can't target it. All right, fine. Kill him! <laughs> uh, they okay. All right, apply six, uh, sorry, apply eight defense. Costs one more per other card in your hands. You can also make it three 
and cost one more per other card in your hand. So I've been thinking about this ever since I saw it unlock. Do you take this when you're taking things that say like, you know, discard a card, gain actions equal to its cost plus one, or like things that care about the cost of other cards? There's also apply two Scorch and two Burn to a random enemy. Uh, not random enemy, an enemy. I do also want to run a Scorched and Burn build. I haven't done that yet. Alright, let's do that. What? You dislike me? Just because I beat up one of your workers? You're doing that with more steps every day. Uh, convince Draper to stay away from Workside A or beat him up. Alright, beat him up, bud. Oh, we can have a hard time convincing Calandra that we're uh, worthwhile at all. Okay, so the Scorched Effect. Sorry, we'll actually go across, right? Uh, burn at the start of your turn. Take damage equal to your counter burn. Deal half as much to all allies. Remove all burns. Scorched. Whenever burn is triggered, remove one Scorch and half of your burn instead of removing all burn. So you need both, ideally. What are you... He was just showing me a map. Hey, look at this map. It's a really cool map. And then he just put it away, and that's the end of his turn. Well done, bud. Accomplished very little. Um, yeah, hair trigger. I want to keep these charges empty, if at all possible. I'm on fire. Look at this paper. It's not burning. Add more fire, please. If only I had more fire cards in this deck. Did I arrive? Uh, who's you doing, Raps? This is Rook, and currently we don't really have a build. We have a Brute and a Spotty in this deck. Brute is hit all targets, lose all dominance, so I'm kind of leaning towards a dominant hostility deck. Uh, and then Accelerant, because I want to try and go into a, a, a burn deck here. What does Shovel do? Shovel does... There you go. Uh, deals two bonus damage per empty cell, and gains two defense per charge. So usually, empty charge at the end of your turn gives you one block each. So this enables you to have full charge and still gain a decent amount of block. Because looking at these, apply three defense and gain two charge. Having four defensive cards in a deck of like 14. Rook isn't good at defending. Rook is bad at defending. Oh my god, the enemy is about to deal a billion damage to me. The next attack on this fighter does double damage and removes one weak point. Crank, interestingly here, it gains two charge. Gaining that charge actually prevents me from getting two defense at the end of my turn, which it gives me. So I'm gonna blast instead. So anyway, I just started blasting. No, I'm still getting experience. I'm staying in this battle for a moment. Uh, Contrarian? Maybe? Okay. Ah, we surfaced. Alright. Gain too much charge. Don't really need to. I'm gonna put the tracer out in the deck. Don't need it though. All right, there we go. We're out of experience for the rest of this, and I can finally afford to kill you. Wait, am I killing? I could. I was just told to keep him away from the work site, right? But the thing is, I will make all of the Rise hate me instantly. How okay am I with the Rise hating me instantly? Wanted alive? Is he wanted alive? Oh, I've been told to keep the target alive! Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Uh... 
Spend one charge, gain two actions. I do like that a lot. And draw a card as well. Baby, we're going Gunsmoke. Does the shovel tooltip are wrong? Just notice the damage from the card is correlated with the empty cells. Uh, yeah, that's what it says though. Deal two bonus damage based on empty cells. Right? Alright. Back to our fellow friend. Upgrade a battle card or upgrade a negotiation card. I wish I had a better card here to upgrade. I mean, Gunsmoke. Honestly, Gunsmoke getting upgraded immediately is pretty good. And gain three defense is appealing, but I want the draw, uh, the card draw, especially if I'm gaining two actions. I like defense more? Really? But it gives me two actions. So when I think about this card, I'm thinking like, I've got a hand of five cards. Imagine all of them are one cost, right? If I play Visionary Gunsmoke, it costs one, I get two actions back, I end up with four actions, and then I just play the whole rest of my hand. But I'm, I have to like the rest of my hand at that point. This gives me, uh, Visionary Gunsmoke here gives me more options, so I just choose one of the cards not to play. Basically, if my whole deck is good, Stone Smoke's better. If not entirely my whole deck is good, then Visionary Smoke is better in my appearance, uh, in my uh, estimation. Three defense is better than your average card. Yes and no. The fact that I'm going to be uh, spending all of my charge consistently, I'm not going to run for a fully charged build and I'm going to try and increase my charge slots and stuff like that, means that uh, running on low charge is already going to provide us a lot of defense. I feel like a lot of the time in the early game here, after I get my defense upgraded, um, I will kind of be defending handily. So the idea for Sneaky Seek's character, don't watch his content, do you have any ideas? I, I was going to say Spider-Man. I think I will take the uh, the card draw as well. Love me some card draw. Let's actually look at the negotiations just in case there's something I want to upgrade there instead. Spotty getting upgraded is nice, but Spotty also like every fight gets like experience easily, but it only gets one experience every fight. That's something I should probably consider. This is expend, so it can only get one experience per fight. Hey, Alessandra, how's it going? We were trying to figure out uh, who Sneaky Teak would be in the MCU because uh, a lot of people uh, across the wholesome verse have been tagged as different MCU characters. You're not wrong. Easy. All right. Yeah, Spotty is going to be expended every single time that it gets drawn, so it will take me eight fights to upgrade it. Whereas in the battle deck, we've got Gunsmoke that I'll play every time I draw it, so I'll upgrade it myself. I think actually I upgrade the this body. I'm glad that I took an extra second to figure that one out and definitely go for the card draw. I'm always going for card draw. Silly, thank you very much for the gift of a tier one sub to Elisander Poet. Elisander, enjoy your remotes and chat. Welcome to the Republic. All right. Push down. So we've got Food Fight and Caught in the Chaos. This gives us Tincture, gain one power, replenish, destroy after one use. Maybe that'll allow us to take a harder mission earlier. It's got combat and negotiation. The thing is, I just uh, I just did a lot of combat and I want some health back. So the more negotiation I do, the better off I am right now. This also gives me another upgrade, which I could use to very quickly get my uh, gun smoke up or possibly another card that I happen to pick up over the course of it. All right, food fight. Let's go. Is there anything you're selling actually that's important or interesting? While this is in your hand, gain one temporary power whenever you draw a card on playable. Ooh. That's really interesting. I'm down, I'm down. Like a heavy, heavy draw build kind of thing. Tink's personality is really unflappably optimistic and kind. Maybe Captain America. I could see that. Definitely. 
Kind of like the, the Evans interpretation. Let's go for the food fight. Oh, I gotta remember not to spend any money so that I can actually uh, get the, the double upgrade. Right, talk to the lead worker or the spark baron. Talk to the lead worker. Threaten the lead worker into submission. I feel so bad about these. Well, do I fight? I'm the aggressor in that fight though. But if I'm the aggressor in that fight, I'm still like, <laughs> both of these ways, Eccles gonna dislike me. Threaten will give you health. Yeah, Threaten gives me health. That's that's the reason I wanted to take this uh, negotiation encounter over the combat negotiation encounter. But there's also combat here. I, the tags that say combat or negotiation or combat and negotiation, I don't think they mean anything. Talk to the Baron first. Why would the workers merit your time? You're right. Here you go. Convince Frash to back me up in a fight. So I'll do this, then I'll go to the other one. Yeah, th this will just give me an extra encounter. That's more experience for me. Alright, we're gonna upgrade our call its here. Tricky looking for some defense. Uh, I can gruff to save one HP, or I can slight to possibly draw a defend. Hey, Umbrionic, thank you very much for the uh, the gift of five two one subs in the community, uh, including Dead Man Killer One, Bolo Bear, Myray, Aegon the 17th and way 1992 enjoy remotes and chat and welcome to the republic each of you thank you very much Umbiotic. very kind if the quest says negotiation it generally means the combat is difficult or it gives you a downside oh okay thank you for the uh, little tidbit of information there. i'm gonna use slight oh, but i only have what's left in the deck right one, two, three. There's three defense cards left in the deck. So it's like a 33. 33.3. I'm just going to take my guaranteed one health here. <clears throat> Happy my birthday to the people who were randomly chosen. Happy birthday, Umbryonic. We get some uh, raps yays in chat for the celebration. I love that it's raps yay now, not uh, raps 05 yay. Definitely gonna be gambling here to try and get my. Oh, there we go. Get some defense up. Didn't work out excellently there. Okay. Definitely need to get rid of appropriated as soon as possible. Oh, brute. Thank you, brute. God, that card is so good. The fact that the the overkill damage from each of the arguments then hits the core resolve is, oh, it makes them so much better than than it makes AOE cards so much better than you might otherwise expect. And, and grumble out. Give me the give me it again. Damn it. I'm so tempted to try and use trickery to try and get two draws so that I can get back to my brute, but I know that's a bad idea. Uh, okay. So I need to take out appropriated this round. Yeah, we'll do that. Then I'll gamble first to see what happens. I don't want to take out the enemy yet. I haven't got all the experience I want. Oh my god, perfect. Defend you, defend you. I don't need to use that call at this time. Rook can't have evil eye, yeah? Uh, not that I know of, no. It might be a later unlock. There might be another card similar to it in a later unlock or something like that. So I want to play as many of these as possible. So don't hit three. Actually, do I need to risk that? No, I can just hit the back line with this. Okay, then I want to call it to try and... Not offend. There we go. Hit one, please. Thank you. And then finish up with the brute. Bring all the experience out of that fight I can. Now, interestingly, I got these two callets. I, I by default go to gamble twice rather than set the coin. But maybe I should be setting the coin. Can you set the coin from the side it is on to the same side to trigger the effect? 
right? So if I have it in heads, can I set the coin to heads in order to trigger the heads effect of a coin? Yes, yes, okay, beautiful. All right. Mm, I'll probably destroy the Lucid Gamble here, honestly. Just uh, the the be the more that I can do to get the base cards out of my deck, the better. And if the other option was dominance, maybe I would take that. And it does generate the effect if you said it's what it is. Perfect. I'll take the destroy the. I'll t I'll take the safe for composure here. Definitely. Yeah, I d I don't think in this run I'm gonna want to rig things much. If your cards need a gamble, then they do not work with a set of coin. That's why I like gamble twice more. I have done a lot of gamble heavy builds. And the thing is, the, the builds that are super interesting with gamble heavy stuff seem to be later builds. Uh, builds with cards that I have not yet unlocked. In particular, uh, the... Oh god, what was it called? Headshot. The one that Elisande was running uh, yesterday. Let me go with the uh, decisive twice here, actually. When this card is drawn, gamble unplayable. Gamble then draw a card. Is there any coin in particular I want to go for? It's very early to be trying to decide this, right? What coin I want to be going for? That said, it's really important that I get cards as soon as I possibly can. Because I, I upgrade something at the end of this uh, this mission. Have you had a look at the experimental branch yet? Yes, I have. And I have uh, crashed on a lot of Rook runs. Want to see Foul Plus? Foul Plus goes to draw a card, discard a card, or discard a card for extra damage. Roughneck Gamble, remove Composure or steal Composure. I mean, both of these remove the Composure at least. Like, stealing it still gives it to you. And they just add damage and then reverse the effects. Yeah. Foulmouth makes sense, does it? For discarding a card? Played at the end of the turn for a decent amount of damage. It's not that much damage, though. Oh, because I'm a meanie. Yeah, that does make sense. Raw is good as long as you have a bit of front-loaded damage. I think your AE hostile cards should uh, help you to afford it. That's a fair point, Pot. Steel Composure is nice. Uh, there's a lowbrow card, um, which is just like uh, Steel Composure. If you are on heads, it's, it's heads. No, if you're on snails, Steel Composure. I think, and it's an attack. So it's it's like this, but without the gamble and uh, broadly more reliable. This is in like a rigging build. I'll take roll. All right, Echo. No, I'll go for the conversation again because I want more health. Also, the Intimidates are actually decent for us. End of my turn, incept to insulted. Perfect. I should probably just get rid of the lucid grumble as soon as I can here. Unfortunately, got an absolutely crummy draw right now. Diplomacy cards deal negative one damage. That's okay, I don't intend on using many of them. to defend there. Well, pleasant trees as well. I'll hold a decisive call. It don't need it, so. So now's the point at which I try and just defend for the rest of this time. Defend. Defend. Lost to them? No. Should I rig? Doesn't really matter, I think. In fact, I'm even going to leave Groff in the deck. Play it on a later turn. 
Seal Composure is weird. In many of the fights, they generate less than four a turn, so it ends up being a crappy block. There are some core arguments where you can exploit it, though. Yeah, it, it does seem like... Because, like, my, my point of comparison is obviously Slay the Spire. Uh, and it does seem like far fewer enemies have block in this game than uh, they have in the other. So I, I do have to kind of adjust the way I value it based on that. I haven't necessarily done enough of that adjusting yet, I feel. Let's get the bonus action next turn. And rumble at him. There we go. Is Parasite being kept in the deck this time around? If I can. I'm, I'm looking for one of the boggers that'll give me uh, good Parasite results. I mean, I can defend this turn, so I can, I'm kind of obliged to. Don't hit two. Dang. <sighs> I gambled and lost. Gain one dominance. Yep. That's exactly what I was looking for. This one by itself is not going to be that good because I am going to need to gain more dominance because obviously I'm losing dominance every single round and stuff like that. And obviously, like, Brute is removing all of it from me. But this will be part of keeping my dominance up when I get other cards that give me dominance. It's just I haven't found any yet. Speaking of haven't found any yet, discard this card, draw one card, and gain a dominance. I mean... Yeah... We need some discard trigger in this if we're doing it, though. I can see it. I can see it, though. Crash loves me. Oh, what? When I sleep, gain two experience on a random card. No problem, bud. Crash loves me and no one hates me. Echo dislikes me. Doesn't hate me, though. Bottom snail is cute, so I take it. You're right. I definitely should, based on exclusively that reason. Uh, ooh. Upgrade a card. I've still got the gun smoke to upgrade, and it has a lot of pips to get upgraded. But we also have Bottom Snail, which is unplayable, and at the moment, I have nothing I can do to upgrade it. Twig? Uh, you, I, I'm pretty sure you, yeah, you can't upgrade Parasite cards. Sure, everyone dislikes me, but no one hates me. So yeah, I'd say I'm winning. Exactly. And then if they do hate me, I kill them, and then no one alive hates me. So I'm still winning. Let's have a look at the bottom snails. What? Am I misreading this? Draw one card and gain one dominant, uh, two dominance, or draw two cards and gain two dominance. This one's just better? All right. Thanks. All right, we got Felomo to like this already. Deeper in the bog, Brash is looking for a guide to an expedition in the bog. Definitely gonna be giggling for that. I think it's a mistype. I, it's whether or not it works like that is is the part that's uh, important to me. All right, hang on. We actually haven't uh, haven't seen this on camera yet. I think. You find a lone Jake pouring over a crudely drawn map. Who there? Are you looking for the opportunity of a lifetime? Always. What are you offering? The bog. It holds riches. I'm sure of it. In my limited experience, the bog holds mostly danger, slime, and a quick death. But also riches. My research proves it. I just need a bit of protection to help me avoid the quick death part. You follow me as I follow this map and I shall the spoils. Uh, are you in? Rash wants you to protect her as she ventures deep into the bog. Tell me about this research. Why? So you can steal it? No way. All right, let's go. The left upgrade used to be one card and three dominance. They nerfed it because it was incredibly powerful, but I guess they haven't decided exactly what they want to change it to yet. Ah, cool. Fair enough. So 
So I got a negotiation card, spooked. When drawn, discard a random card. Brash leads you through the bog. The terrain gets rougher the farther you go along the road and you eventually become, uh, become. Yeah, you eventually turn into a, a, a rocky outcrop. You are part of the environment now. Other people tread on you. Rook's story ends. Uh, your heart fills with dread as your boots fill with bog water. Wait, did you hear that? What is it? It's nothing. Let's keep going. Keep going. Uh, you follow, surrounded by bog on all sides. You press on. The bog presses in. The no uh, your nose experiences things that language cannot yet describe. I hear it again. You sure it's not? You settle on, uh, set upon by the local fauna. Ah, uh, yes, the famous element of the fauna, an auto dog. We can do this, Brash. All right. I just need to find a way to uh, take as long as possible in this fight. Okay, I'm gonna go for the deep breath to try and find some more defensive cards. Didn't work out. I'm gonna take a little bit of damage this turn, but it's gonna be okay. But it's a feral auto dog? You're right. I hadn't considered that. These are elements of the natural environment. I. Auto dogs themselves were actually manufactured by people, but feral auto dogs, they uh, came like us from the primordial ooze. Fully formed, completely feral at the time as well. So, anyway, I just started the last. Remember to save money for the double upgrade? Yep, I'm gonna try and do it. If I try and spend money, make sure that uh, make sure that you remind me not to. It does sound like me. I'll try and still do that. Either of these shots might end up killing. Okay. I mean, look, a turn where I just get to play three hunker downs, start leveling those up. Everything I My gosh. Sure, I'll just take another turn and do another. Oh, should I finish it off with a kick? No, because I might draw defend, defend, attack next turn. Which double upgrade? Get two more charge slots or lose two. Uh, as per the, uh, the advice I got in Poet's stream, I am probably going to go for the double uh, increase so that I have the ability to get more defense from emptying those slots out. I mean, I can now use Accelerant and then Hair Trigger at least. Probably should have been the kick actually though. Uh, replenish, Piercing, Destroy after one use. I mean, honestly, if they have Replenish, I'm totally fine taking them, but also because they have Piercing, they're 10 damage to metallic enemies, so great. Uh... Spend one charge, deal two bonus damage per empty cell. This is exactly the kind of card that we're gonna want in this deck. You find a strange structure. We found it, the heart of the bog. Where's the money part of it? It requires sacrifice first. Quickly, lay down on that platform. I'll plunge my knife through your heart and you'll, uh, your spirit will join the bog and unlock its secrets. Excuse me? Don't worry, it won't be hurt. And you'll be reborn in the spirit of the bog. Uh... Kill her and sacrifice her to the bog? I mean, that's a very rook thing to do for what I'm doing right now. Are there, uh, are there any results here that I could specifically aim for, Elisander? Because I, I don't know, like, this seems like a rare event to the point that it seems like there should be a unique way to finish it. I oftentimes just tend to kill people and then leave. Let's be reborn as a bog. So fight and die? Ah, I'm into it. It's not rare. There's multiple middles and at least two ends. Okay, cool. Defend. What the hash, Brash? Cruelty? Oof. Should be fine here, though. Okay. 
Accelerant, shovel, ammo pouch, ammo pouch first. Looking for wound, found it. Wonder if you could be reborn. Yeah, I, I don't know. It would be interesting if that was a thing that uh, was capable of having happened, but I, I, I expect it's unlikely. I'm intentionally playing that one first. Yeah. Good. Hair trick is now upgraded. I should have done it in the other order to deal less damage there, to be entirely honest with you, actually. Uh, ooh, gun smoke so I can double kick this round? Actually, if I double kick, the enemy goes down. What are they? They're taking six damage to the grout knuckle? Gun smoke. Kick you once. Stop blasting. Two damage. Eh, what do I wait? I wait. A little bit more upgrade on that twig, as well as. Uh, I mean, I'm just gonna defend this turn. Hang up. I'll be taking my experience, thank you. This turn I probably ought not. We'll wound you, hunker down for the upgrade. There's a gun smoke for the experience on it. Hunker down for the upgrade and then lucky shot. Bye bye. I feel like there is a bit of lore for the bog. Uh, I feel like there is a bit of a lore for why the bog seems to be helping you in this fight. Yeah, maybe the bog knows her mission in some way. It'd be interesting if the bog rewards me for having done that. Gain defense equal to the damage dealt by this card. I like Gaff. I don't want many of them, but I think I will take this one. Hair trigger and hunker down, get upgraded. Hunker down, destroy. Oof. I don't actually want to gain charges. I kind of want to take the destroy there. Removes more defense from the deck, which is dangerous, though. Spend one charge to deal two bonus damage. Well, it's probably spend up to two charge here. The reason we want to go for that is because, ideally, we want to get rid of all of our charge. I assume the stem and tweak make the bog feel you're a part of it. What if you remove both of those before you go to the bog? Does that have any uh, effect? Let's go in Heart's Trigger and Destroy. Burn on to apply three burn. Upgrades to apply five burn. Burn is a lot of AoE. Sure. Probably not going to take many more copies of burn there, but I'll take that one at least. Brash is dead. You rummed through her notes before leaving. Oh, okay. I, Okay. So in, in a run I had off camera, I got these, the deep bog, uh, deep bog secrets, but I got them at the very end of the game. Like I got them from a grout bog, uh, like a, a, a bubble or something that had appeared in one of the final fights just before the end of Rook's campaign. So I didn't have time to actually hatch them, but now I will.